Is Giovanna any good in triangle strategy? Let us discover the truth in this video. All right, so let's jump in to her stats and her kit. So she is a kind of weird unit. Her her general role is kind of like a magical bruiser, if that makes sense. Uh, she can hit things at range and can benefit from a battery, but she has a lot of setup in order to use her. Uh, so knowing that, let's dive into her stats. All right, so strength, 41. That's like medium. Physical defense, 55. Uh, like medium. Uh, actually pretty good for a mage, to be honest. So something to keep in mind with her kit. Magical attack, 51. On the lower end for offensive magic, but her AoE range is good enough that it offsets her low, like, single target damage. Magic defense, 63. I would say that's, like, higher. Luck, 39. That's medium slash higher. Uh, most units have pretty low luck, but it's, like, medium-ish. Accuracy, 62. That's high. Speed, 24. That's very low. So she often goes last, which is unfortunate. Evasion, 51. That's medium. Jump three, that's above average, so medium slash high in between there. Most units have two jump, so she has a little bit, she's a little bit more jumpy than your average unit. Movement of seven, so this one, this is a weird one. Uh, this, she has the best mobility in the game for some reason. She has, like, just by moving. Like, other units can move more tiles with, like, abilities, but her, her raw move stat is the highest in the game unconditionally. So she can reposition like a madman or she can reposition like a land master which is her class which is the most hilarious class title i've ever seen in any video game to date i have to say master of land all right so let's look at her base damage for her pickaxe so if she whacks something she has like kind of low to mid medium like you know low to medium damage it's not low it's not medium it's kind of in between 169 at level 50 that's decent next we have her first ability rock toss or in other words don't use it the the ability uh it does low damage it does less damage than just whacking things with a pickaxe it costs one tp and it also has the condition of being on flatland rock or pavement uh this in my opinion this is like her worst ability because her other abilities are actually decent and if you set them up properly she can actually contribute to aoe damage uh but honestly just don't even use this if you if you want to chip damage something her magic stat is high enough that you can just throw an Ice Stone, Fire Stone, Wind Stone, Thunder Stone, or a large or, you know, la extra large or whatever the hell, Thunder Stone, like whatever stone. So you can hit the enemy at their elemental weakness, you can hit like 100-ish damage, and it doesn't cost TP. That's mu You're much better off doing that, because she's kind of a bruiser, so she can be close enough to do this. So don't even, don't, do not waste your time with Rock Toss, it sucks. There's like no reason to use it. Alright, Trekking for TP grants one tp when moving five or more squares so seven move move five or more squares get an extra tp so this helps her get two tp per turn uh, if you notice a lot of her abilities cost two or three tp uh, rock toss costs one but as we outlined earlier it's not the best thing now it can trigger follow-up attacks sure but it's probably not worth your time <laughs> you just i just wouldn't use it um so so unless you want to specifically trigger a follow-up attack at a weird angle you're, you're better off skipping it. But yeah, that's pretty much the only use case. So trekking for TP. So you, what she can do is cast a spell and then move to just like help her maintain TP. You might be better off just running like a battery and just having her with your mage spam, assuming you have like one or two mages that need to get AoE TP restoration from Medina. Um, but she can cast an ability, like cast a spell and then move. And then it th helps her maintain her TP to some degree. It can also put her in danger too, so like, it can be hard to find squares to move to on some maps. So the less space she has, the harder it is for her to manage TP, or the more reliance on a battery she requires. Uh, but this is a decent ability, and with 7 move, it's pretty good. Uh, Ivy Beam. This, in my eye, like in my opinion, is like her best like spell, but the problem with it is it's only able to be used on grass and wheat field. Because, and here's why I think it's the best. 6 range, 250 non-elemental magic damage, so ignores resistances, and it has a chance to immobilize. But the thing that sucks about it is that you need to be on grass or wheat field. And there's this really common tile type you'll run into in the game called Flatlands, which I think it should also work on Flatlands because it's still Earth. 
uh, but it doesn't work on flatlands. And a lot of tiles are not grass or wheat field. A lot of tiles are flatlands. So you're going to be finding that this is one of her hardest spells to consistently use just because of map tile squares and you cannot create grease or, or grease grass or wheat field you cannot create it so this is going to be her less her least used ability but in my opinion the best one she has to offer for for tp to damage and utility ratio uh, being able to hit up to six targets for decent damage for two tp and have a chance to immobilize this is insane but she's she has a hard time getting this off and it's really annoying and unfortunate but yeah, so she's she's kind of at the mercy of the tiles on the ground to some degree, but there's there's one way to get around it, and I'll cover that. Next we have Splash. Uh, for two TP, she can kind of heal. Um, this works in a bunch of different water-based tiles, shallows, aqueduct, pond, saltwater puddle. Uh, puddles are something you can easily create. Uh, you can melt ice, or you can just have Izana create a rainstorm. So this can be quite useful with Izana because at least she can for sure get, get puddles to use. So pretty useful. Um, it, she's kind of like a generalist role. I think that's what I put her in in the, the one video because she's a little bit of everything. She's not like a damage carry and her damage is inconsistent and expensive because of her the high TP costs. So we'll, we'll cover that once I go over her abilities uh, in, the, in the actual map. Uh, next she has TP to power. Increase your strength and magic attack. The greater your TP, the greater the boost. So, I think it's like one point per. We can test this, but right now, all right, so she's 41 strength, so I'll just have to keep that in mind so that when I run her in the thing, we can see exactly how much she gets. So right now she's at 41, and then 51 magic. So I'll actually, I'll, I'll just try to remember that. All right, next we have Scorched Earth. Similar to Ivy Beam. Kind of annoying to, to pull this one off because in order to get... Like, Molten Iron is an extremely rare <laughs> tile. A Blaze is more common. Uh, but in order to just ablaze something that isn't flammable, like to set something ablaze, you have to throw oil down and then set it ablaze, which is two turns of setup, which is kind of annoying. So it, it's basically the exact same damage as Gelid Barrage. But I just think it's worse than Gelid Barrage because it's much harder to set up. So let's move on to Gelid Barrage. Um, this is definitely her best ability for just consistent damage because it is extremely easy to get frozen tiles. You can use an item on the ground, anyone can, get frozen tiles. Corintin, frozen tiles. Narv, frozen tiles. Once she gets a few frozen tiles, she can create six more in a line, and with her run to her run, you know, her move five and get one TP, she can just run along the line and like line up more Jalad barrages and just keep going to town so once it gets started it keeps going but the downside of scorched earth is unless there is a flammable thing like uh, grass or wheat or a barricade or something or oil on the ground you can't just keep it going so this this is definitely her her best average like you're going to be spamming this the most as her because the rest of it is too hard to consistently pull off and sometimes you get lucky and you can spam ivy beam and it's insane uh, but generally you're going to be spamming this because it's consistent and it's reliable. So so her kit is very dependent on map, like tiles and what you can bring to the table in the form of um, like water, ice, and fire. And the, the, the water and the ice are the easiest to bring out for her. So she becomes like an off healer. Like she can, she can contribute to healing, to healing, but she can't carry it. And then she becomes like an off damage where she can contribute to damage, but she will not carry it because her costs are too high. Uh, even with a battery, because you have to you have to play around her kit. And I'll show that in like a mock battle, but all right, finally, we have Gaia's Roar. So this ability has infinite range. Um, I'll show this as well, it costs five TP though. Uh, you don't need to be on a specific tile to use it. One thing I was hoping for in her kit, like for her upgrades, and I'll go into these in like a second, was some kind of utility upgrade that makes it so that you can cat, cast like Scorched Earth on just like a new tile type, like Flatlands or something. But then that would be a very clever thing to help make her more viable. But unfortunately, her upgrades are just very blah. So we'll just jump into these really quick. Like they don't really help solve her problem of not being able to get tiles that she needs. Or even if she had an ability to convert something to a tile or if she had some passive from an upgrade that like, it's like, oh, it's either 
you're always considered to be on a blazing tile so that the fire can work. Or you're always considered to be in grass, even if you're not, for ivy to work. Like, that would have been a cool either or, but instead it's just, like, rock toss buffs. Um, you can kind of hear the disappointment in my voice here, but it's like, ugh. All right. Okay. So, her upgrades. First column is all just damage and increasing healing. Uh, this is useful. Uh, the main thing she'll be doing is contributing to healing and using Gelid Barrage. Uh, that's like her best use case. Her big AoE has infinite range in a cross shape. So you can kind of hit things from really far away with that. But it costs 5 TP. And even if you run a Medina and a Julio, that can be annoying to get off consistently. So like getting something to 5 TP is, is pretty hard to do. <laughs> like it's because it's, it's like one unit and the enemies have to be lined up too and it doesn't like hit infinite height so yeah so but you definitely want these if you're gonna be running her for the chip damage from her pickaxe and the extra healing and weapon potency also scales your uh, magical damage uh, and then you want health uh, i would say you want these because she's kind of going to be flanking to some degree or at least moving around and being in danger a lot but she's durable enough to take a hit or two uh, defense increase you want it movement increase you always want these no matter the unit these are always one of the best like these are the best upgrades to get if it's just like defense health or like evasion and then evasion this helps three more evasion it's decent so i'd say you want pr you pretty much want anything the or ability honestly you can skip it um rock toss is just such low impact that i don't think it's worth running the only use case it really has is triggering follow-up attacks and that's it. Uh, you do either get range plus one or damage increase. Doesn't really matter. It's not even good. So it's just a waste of TP, in my opinion. Um, it's just it's disappointing, honestly. <laughs> I wish it did more. Uh, maybe even something like here. Here's what I would make Rock Toss do: keep it exactly the same, but with, with its damage the same, but make it so that it, it acts as like a delaying strike. Now it now we're talking. Now it does something useful. So it, you can justify wasting one tp to you know increase the range of it and then maybe this could be increase the delay effect of it so it's kind of like a range delaying strike because it still requires certain uh ground tiles to be standing on in order to use so I, it's just not worth using in mo in like 90 percent of situations and the 10 percent is when it can trigger a follow-up attack at range or something but yeah i don't think it's really that good all right and then her other upgrade for tier three aside from weapon damage and healing is her Gaia's Roar, which is her big AoE that you don't need to be on any tile, just always works. Hits at infinite range. So we'll just like look at that again really quick. Actually, we can just we can just start a game. I'll go on like a bigger map. It'll still be lower level, just so I don't have to like care about what's going on in the match. I can just focus on the unit. Um, I am gonna be. I did just start doing the chapter guides. So I'm going to be starting a new game and, and uh, on hard with a new file, and we'll be going over chapter guides. All right, so... Okay, let's get rid of Frederica, and then run... Probably Julia, that's fine. All right, we'll just start. So she's like a bruiser that has good mobility that can contribute to AoE, but she has problems with, like, her all of her good abilities are, like, 3 TP. And you have to plan, or you have to play around her. So like, she doesn't really create opportunities for other units. You have to create opportunities for her, which can be annoying. And you'll see what I mean in like a few seconds. Oh, these guys are really fast for some reason. All right. Okay, let's do two things. Battle cry. And then in tandem. And then I'll kill, whoops, I'll kill two of these guys just to get rid of some enemy turns, just to speed this up. All right. Okay, so her seven move is good. Her durability is good. Her melee damage is whatever, but she can just whack things or throw a fire stone or something every turn uh, when you're generating TP. So here's Gaia's Roar. Uh, so you can see there, it has a height plus or minus two. So even though it has like infinite range, it's actually getting cut off at these stairs here, and it's getting cut off on these docks. So yes, it will hit all of these things, and it'll deal like maybe like 200 damage against normal enemies. You can see here. Okay, so here's the strength increase too. So plus one strength and plus one magic per point of TP. So that's confirmed, tested. 
when you look at their base stats, it doesn't consider them having any TP. So there you go, plus one strength and magic attack per TP from TP to power. So it's a little bit of extra chip damage. Uh, and also a little bit of extra healing, because your magic attack does increase the amount healed. Okay, so Gaia's Roar, 343 three damage. So it'd roughly hit like 200 against most enemies of, at, of the same level. And you can see here the height issue, it just, it just falls off in terms of height. So if they're on elevation, it won't hit them. Um, I can use this and kill them, but I would rather just go over the rest of her abilities. Well, actually, yeah, we can use this and kill them. Let's get rid of some of them. She's not going to be able to do anything else anyways, because she needs she needs other units to give her tiles that she can make use of, and that's like the big problem with her kit. Uh, she's not like a bad unit. I would say she's like roughly B tier in strength. She's definitely not like a carry. It's just like shock. We'll do this. We'll ride a rain. Just get some rain on the field. Some puddles. All right, and then Narv will create some ice. And you could, alternatively, you could just throw like an ice stone. That'll create ice as well. Okay, so here's Corintin. He can just nuke these, just get rid of some more enemies. Because we really just care about her abilities. We don't care about the rest of this. Uh, we'll kill this one as well. Cool. Okay, she is quite slow, so she tends to go last. Okay, here we go. So her main thing is Gelid Barrage, and similar to her big AoE, uh, whatever the hell, Gaia's Roar, um, her, her ranged attacks, they suffer from height. So this is one of her big problems, uh, the other being that a lot of her good abilities cost a lot of TP, so, and she needs specific tiles. So for example, if these were enemies, uh, I could hit both of them. And then like move seven to get an extra TP from uh, trekking for TP. That's kind of like the idea. You either move and then cast, or then cast and then move. And then if you're out of position to do either, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> like it's like that's just her kit. So tough. <laughs> you know that's basically the brutal reality of her kit. Uh, Corentin, I think, is just straight up better than her in every way. Um, he ha he has util he has every he brings like everything to the table. He's less durable. Like you can see here, his physical defense is terrible. So she's she is so so here's the here's the upside there. She is durable. She has big AOEs and under the right conditions can hit a lot of foes. And she can kind of be like a toolkit where she can heal or deal damage, create ice tiles, set things on fire, uh, spike a bunch of targets at insane ranges with Gaia's roar. Uh, but the downside is all of her good abilities cost at least three TP, and her good ability that costs two TP. Like let's look. Let's look at these tiles. Pavement, 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 uh, pavement, um, roof, pavement, pavement. Everything's pavement. Not a single tile on this map isn't pavement or water, aside from like the pier, which is like wood. So like there's no there's grass on these, but there's no grass tiles on this map. So grass is actually quite rare on a lot of maps, especially like inner city maps and maps on like bridges and things like this. So you're going to almost never be using Ivy Beam. And you're mostly going to be just spamming Gelid Barrage. And getting Scorched Earth working, like I'll show it. It's like really annoying. I'll show it just to like... Um, hold on. First, what we'll have to do... Uh, she will create... I'm sorry, she'll go here. She'll throw... You have to, you have to throw down an oil unless there's a burnable thing. Uh, and she'll just kind of pass... We'll just pass. I, I think it'll the rain will put it out, so I think I actually have to wait for it to stop raining. Uh, I actually, let's test that. I don't think I've tested that. We'll scorch it. Let's see. Let's see what happens if the rain just puts it out. It's an oil fire, so it shouldn't, like, in terms of the laws of physics. All right, so it doesn't. Great. All right, so let's say we want to set a bunch of tiles on fire with scorched earth. And the reason why I say um, Gelod... How is it? Barrage? <laughs> Gelod Barrage is better than scorched earth is because... Scorched Earth needs flammable tiles to set them on fire. Gel Barrage will always freeze the ground. And there's very few circumstances in which it won't. You can see there. And it also does the exact same damage. So the only case in which Scorched Earth is better is if the enemies are weak to fire or resistant to ice. Uh, but even then, it's still way easier to pull off. You don't have to waste 
like two turns setting up an oil and then setting it on fire, that's two units acting. You're better off just hitting them for a little bit less damage in most cases, unless you're already spamming oil. And then also she has to stand in the fire to do it, which is stupid. <laughs> so she's like taking damage. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see the problem here. Like now that she's at like one TP, I can just kind of move and get one TP back, but I can't really contribute at all. I can't do anything. Like I can trek for TP and then next turn I can do something. But a lot of mages, like, you know, Corintin, Narv, Izana, uh, Frederica, they can cast really big damage or big value spells for 2 TP. And also including other mages like Gila and Cordelia. Like, for 2 TP, both Gila and Cordelia can spike heal pretty well for at least half of something's health. So, so yeah. Uh, overall, I would say she's, like, B tier. She's hard to play around. She is more durable, but she doesn't have as much damage. So she has... So she's like a mage bruiser. Um, and she, but the thing is, the problem with her is that she's hard to <laughs> to use. And not in a way where it's like Roland, where you just have to know how to position him. And then it's just like, he just plays himself. You know, he just you just have to know his positioning and just hit a few targets and line them up. For her, you have to get like tiles right and you have to like plan ahead. And it, it can be very annoying. And the, the thing is, like in order for her to be efficient and to maintain... Like, even in this situation, like, she has to, like, go... Oh, let me see. Where's she gonna go? Wait, whose turn is it? Oh, Grinton's. Okay, so you just go here, whatever. Doesn't matter. She has to be able to line up her spell. So, like, in this case, she's able to do it. So she's able to get in there. Uh, she has 3 TP, Jellid Barrage. And then she'll get 1 TP for the move. So this is basically her best... Her best uh, use case is her like moving to get tp and then using a skill but if the tiles don't line up or if something changes or the enemy position changes and you can't access them she she becomes really rigid and inflexible so like you're better off just using corentin who can just as long as he's near the enemy can just hit them with aoe for free um but she is more tur more durable so so if you want a more durable like battle mage type thing as long as she gets hit with a battery and someone provides ice tiles, or someone, or even she throws down, like, a, an icy, arranged ice stone or whatever. She can be decent. Uh, but aside from that, her alt is okay, but as you saw there, like, height really screws it up. So she generally wants to be used on flatter maps. Maps with, like, low elevation. And, yeah, like, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. She has, she has a really hard, hard to use kit in so far as, like... She's not flexible, and that's, like, a problem. Like, she's so dependent on what's on the map and what your team brings. Like, she's so reliant on her team just to be remotely effective. Like, some units, you just throw them in a team, they just do what they do best without, like, the help of other units. But she needs ice tiles. Uh, Scorched Earth, I would say don't even waste your time. It's just such a pain to set up unless you're already planning on spamming oil jars and setting things on fire. Uh, but then the, the downside of it is that she's taking damage while while using this and you could argue something like you could use Frederica's fire absorb so it heals her instead of damaging her but now that's just Frederica not killing things <laughs> like casting damage on things so it, it's, just, it's just so much setup too much setup very little payoff uh, she, has, she has good move good durability she can contribute to damage but she's hard to get to cast every, like a spell every turn now if you run her with a battery it's still hard to pull off like, you basically... Like, the thing with Medina is if your units are starting to split apart to take on different groups of enemies at different locations, you don't always want to double items a single thing. Like, sometimes your 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 forces are split, and you want to, like, give one thing... Like, give a Corentin one TP, and then give, like, a Frederica one TP, but they're, like, at different positions because they're doing different things for whatever reason. Um, like, or you want to give, like, a Roland one TP, and then he can go do Rush or something, and then you want to give Corentin or... Frederica 1 TP and they're like not near each other so you have to use items on different groups of things so the fact that she needs to catch 2 TP at from like if she's at 0 TP she needs to be restored at minimum 2 in order to use a spell that like does like it does good damage but it's not as consistent as like a scorch or you know an icy breath like they do less damage sure but these are this is way more this is easier to work with, more consistent. Enemies tend to ball up more than they do line up in a row. I mean, it depends on how you play and how you 
get the AI to move, but two TP is is way easier to play around than a three TP spell cost. And then and not only that, but she also has to be in the right tile, and the enemies can't be too high or too low in relation to her. So it's just very hard to play with her. Um, but when she does pop off, I'd say she's like a B tier. Uh, she's definitely not an A tier because A tier is like always viable and clearly a unit that is that absolutely needs a battery. She needs a battery 100%. If you if you want to ever plan on using Gaia's Roar, you have to use a battery. It's it costs five TP. It's too expensive. And then like yes, she has trekking for TP, but some of these abilities are just hard to pull off and like the height thing really screws them up too. Um, and then like splash is just whatever. Um, but she is, she is like a, a, a generalist, and she kind of can be okay in that way. Like a more durable mage that can sometimes cast spells. That, that's how I would describe her. Uh, she's not going to be spamming spells with a battery because her, she'll burn through her TP too fast anyways. So, like, the the, the reason Corintin is, is better with a battery is because he has TP plus on ice. So every turn, he can just by default get 2 TP. So every single turn, as long as he's on an ice tile which is the same condition as um, Giovanna, he can cast a spell without a battery. So you just put him on high ground with an ice tile and he's just, he's just icy breathing, wall of ice, frosty fetters. And he also has options, right? He, first of all, he doesn't need to be on an ice tile and he has three choices. He can, he can make a wall, he can silence an enemy mage or an enemy unit that has like absurd activated abilities silencing enemy melee can be useful in some situations he can silence enemy healers which prevents them from healing or he can nuke aoe single target nuke silence deny enemies access to things aoe nuke three options two tp and then he can use one without a without a battery every single turn and then if he waits a turn or gets a battery like even just a julio every turn feeding him one extra tp he can icy tomb for big spike if enemies are standing on ice tiles uh, he can shield a vice a tank to make them take one hit and takes no, they take no damage from that one hit. And if he gets two TP from a battery, he can Glacial Moon. So, yeah. And that's a huge range AoE that does a huge nuke, very consistent, ex absurd range. Range 0 to 6, and it has and it has bigger AoE than normal, so it hits even further out. Um, and, and here's the thing, too. If you just have him and Julio, and Julio is at 0 TP... Every turn, Julio gives him an extra TP. He's on ice. He profits one TP per turn. Uh, he can still be casting, like, Icy Breath. So, so here's how it works out, right? Crenton's at zero TP. He's on an Icy Tile. It is his turn. He gains two TP. He casts Icy Breath. Great. Uh, Julio's turn. He gives him one TP, plus gives him a magic damage boost. Okay, now he's at one TP. Next turn. Next time it's Crenton's turn. Re natural regen, Ice Regen. He's at three. And then he casts Icy Breath again. But now he's profited one from Julio. Uh, then another turn goes by. Julio gives him another TP. He's at two. Another turn goes by. Corentin regen natural one. TP plus on ice one. Puts him, putting him at four. And then he Glacial Moons. So he does not waste a single turn. He Icy Breaths twice and then Glacial Moons. That's huge. Like that's so much better than just like repositioning just to get spells off like it's really hard it's just really hard to set these up on her and it's not fun to do like you might enjoy it and like i think conceptually it hurt she has like an interesting kit in terms of like concept but in like actual in actual execution like you're you never get to ivy beam even though you want to really badly like the thing i don't like about her is that you want to use her cool abilities and they are cool abilities but it's so restricted and only a few of them can be consistently activated easily without it being like annoying. Like Splash and Gelid Barrage and Gaia's Roar are basically the things they'll be using. And then Rock Toss is just this like whatever thing. Maybe it triggers a follow-up attack and it's okay, but like why would you Rock Toss when you could Gelid Barrage? Like wouldn't you rather just be spamming this? You know what I mean? Like that's why I don't like Rock Toss. Or you know, wouldn't you rather Gaia's Roar instead of just chipping away at your own TP and you know just saving up while throwing ice stones or something and then Gaia's Roar. Like, I would, I would rather save up for the big damage in AoE than chip away at things. But, but yeah, that's her kit. I would say she's a solid B-tier generalist. Um, 
Unfortunately, IV Beam and Scorched Earth are very inconsistent and hard to pull off. Uh, Gelid Barrage is good and you can use it and then it creates more ice tiles for her to activate it off of, which is good. And then she can run along the ice tiles and then trigger trekking for a TP and line up her attacks. Um, and she is durable, so that is a point in her favor. She can take way more hits than your average mage. Pretty good base health, 45. Pretty good physical defenses. You know, pretty actually quite tanky. So she's like a bruiser mage. Um, but I, I just wish there was like some abilities in her unlocks that would make it so that like like Gelid Barrage now also works on water. Like even something like that. And then Splash now also works on ice. Like just, just like one or two of those. Scorched Earth now also works on like, I don't know, sand or flatlands or something. I think that would be fine. That would make her so much more viable. But instead you just get an either or for Rock Toss. And, and also, like, and honestly, I think if Rock Toss was this thing that, like, worked like Delaying Strike, then it would be big value. And then if she had the ability to have things hit more tile types, that would make her more viable as well. But unfortunately, um, you're going to be missing out on, like, a lot of her abilities on your average match. Unless you really go out of your way and spend, like, up to one to two unit turns to set up some of the things for her that other things just do for free. So, but she's she's decent. She's tanky. So, so yeah, that's Giovanna. This is my 29th video. I just have Travis left, and then we're done, and then we're onto the tier list finally. Um, so, like, if I say she's B tier in this video, I'm still gonna reevaluate her. But like in this case, I think I'm fairly confident that that's like roughly where she should be at. I don't think she's C tier. Like she's like bad or unusable. I think she's like B tier is like circumstantially good, and I think that's exactly her kit, like by definition. So. So yeah, if you like this video, definitely leave a, drop a like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing more triangle strategy content. And if you use her in any interesting ways, if you have any interesting Giovanna strategies, definitely let me know what those are because I'm curious to see if there's something that I'm missing that's like the that, that bumps her up to being better. But as far as I can tell, um you're probably better off just running mages. Yes, she can tank hits, but your utility units can make your mages tanky as well. So it's it's easier to make a mage tanky than it is to constantly feed a unit that's running all over the place battery because Medina can't chase her that far. <laughs> so if like she gets deep in the enemy back line or is like flanking or something, like it, it can be really inconsistent. She's bad on maps where there's height, you know, elevation really messes up all of her abilities literally all of them except for splash and to some degree rock toss uh but yeah that's it for her uh that's it for this video thanks for checking this out and peace